All right, in this video I'm going to show you how to do the isometric version of the flange bearing in chapter 8. So I'm just going to walk us through step by step. If I scroll out a little bit you can see that I've got it done here. This is the flange bearing. It's got all the dimensions that I need. In this particular case I have a sectioned isometric which is a lot harder. It's a lot fancier to do than just the regular section view. Uh, I may record a separate video on how to make it section, but for now we're just going to do a basic isometric of it. And uh, it is important to have the the front and top view already drawn out and dimensioned off to the side here, because there is a dimension I'm going to have to grab off of the, um, in this case it's the front view, depending on how you drew your views. So I'm going to come over here. I'm, first of all, need to make sure that I'm in an isometric mode, so I'll set myself into ISO. Make sure that my ortho is on. Anytime you're in isometric, you need to be in ortho. And I'm going to draw the first line. I know this thing from um, center to center of those arcs on the side, it's a distance of 8. So I'm just going to draw a line that's a distance of 8. And then I'm going to come in here and put my ISO circles in it. I'm going to do the axis end option, I for ISO circle, snap to the midpoint here, and I'm going to make this a diameter, so D enter. Four. It was asking me for a radius, I could have typed 2, but since the drawing gave me a diameter, I went ahead and entered that information. I'm going to do another ISO circle over here. This one has a radius of 1. Do another ISO circle over here. I for ISO circle, radius of 1. So I've got the basic shape um, drawn here. I really don't need that line anymore. <coughs> The difficult part of this is going to be getting the lines to go from tangent to tangent. That is just really hard to do in isometric, unfortunately. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to just shift right click to get my temporary O snaps and I'm going to go with nearest and I'm going to kind of get it about right there. I'm going to turn off my ortho so that I'm not locked into a perfectly straight line. Shift right click and I'm going to go to tangent. And I just kind of eyeballed this one right here. Really the tangency is any point where that line does not touch that circle uh, more than once. The, um, once it crosses that circle twice, that's not the tangency anymore. So we're going to back this up a little bit. Go to nearest. It does take some, some work back and forth. You don't want to see a little bump right there. So you want to make sure it's a smooth transition from here to here. Um, might even just make sure it's going to take a little bit of back and forth and I'm sorry for this that's just a thing when you're doing isometrics uh, in AutoCAD so I'm going to draw another line again we're just going to start off kind of eyeballing it we can always tweak it from there but we're going to go s tangent and see how there's a bump right there so that's not going to work for us so we're going to pick this up and we're going to Go ahead and set it to nearest and we're just going to take it as far up as we can without it actually crossing twice. Okay, that looks good. We'll do the other side. We're going to do a line. We'll do nearest maybe starting here to tangent. It doesn't even want to pick up a tangent so we're going to go ahead and say nearest. get that just as far up as we can get without crossing that line twice. That looks good. One more line back here. Doesn't really what matter which side you start off with. We're just gonna you can co fix from side to side you can fix it later. Maybe right there. Oops. There we go. So that looks good. Um, now what I'm going to do, I've just got kind of the footprint here. Now I need to copy these objects up. So I'm going to use my copy command and I'm going to copy this whole entire thing straight up. We want to make sure that we do have our ortho on because we're back in isometric mode and right now I need to change my crosshair so I'm going to hit F5 so that it'll let me go up 
and I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to do a distance of 1. Now I can kind of draw the lines to connect the dots here, quadrant to quadrant, quadrant to quadrant over there, and I can just trim out what I don't need. So I don't need these back lines at all. <coughs> I'm going to trim this guy right here, and I actually don't need this. Erase this little guy out, and I'm going to come erase this, trim that. So I've just kind of trimmed out the shape that I need. Don't need that one anymore. Um, this looks good. Now I'm going to copy this one straight up and this is going to be a distance. It has an overall of three. I've already gone up one so this will come up two. And I'm going to draw a line from here to here. Now I can trim out the whole back area. And that looks good. I actually have one more little trim right there because technically because it comes to the tangency it won't touch all the way. So I've got a basic start right here and what I need to do now is the counter bore and the counter sink. Uh, when I look over here we're going to do the counter bore first. So I've got two with a diameter of 0.75 or well two because it's happening on both sides. So I have one diameter of 0.75, I have one diameter of one that diameter of 1 only goes down 0.25. So I have two circles to draw. Right, so now I'm going to draw that diameter right here. I'm going to go back up to the ISO circle. I for ISO circle. Start at that same center point. I'm going to type in D enter for diameter and I've got a diameter of 0.75. I'm going to do it one more time. I for ISO circle and this time again same center point with a diameter of 1. So D enter, 1 enter. So this looks good. Now that 1 goes down a depth of 0.125. However, they actually both go down that depth because uh, the bigger hole goes down 0.125 and then that surface right there is where the smaller diameter of 0.75 begins. So I'm going to use my copy command and I'm going to copy both these guys and I'm going to go straight down. Make sure your ortho's on, F5 if you need to, and I'm going to go down 0.125. Made a copy. I do not need the smaller hole on the top at all because um, that smaller hole doesn't start until um, that lower surface that came down 0.125 and now I'm just going to use my trim command, trim to the top, and I've got it right there. So I'm done with that one. What I'm actually going to do is let's just copy this whole entire thing. We're going to pick it up at this center point here and we're going to snap it to the center point there and I'm done. Since it's two times they're exactly identical so once you get it drawn once just go ahead and draw it over there. <coughs> the next one that I'm going to do is this diameter right here. We're going to work on that counter sink. Um, with that, I know that I have two different diameters. I've got 1.50 and I've got 2.50. So I'll start my ISO circles right in the center, F5 to get the ISO circle I need, D, Enter, 1.50, I for ISO circle, same center, D, Enter, and this one is 2.50. So I've got those. What I need to figure out now is just how far down does this go? So how far down do I need to make this? That's why I come over into this project over here and as long as you know that you've made this correctly, let's go check something. This isn't a given dimension, but if we can check angular from here to here, that needs to be 82 degrees. So double check that yours is 82 degrees before you try to do this. We said that it was 82 degrees here, but we never actually checked or put that di uh, degree dimension right here. 
now that we've got that at 82 degrees, what I'm going to do is come in here and find the distance from here to here. I don't need that as a real dimension there, but it's just something I need to know. I need to know how far down I'm going to move this guy. So I start the move command, make sure ortho's on, and I'm going to come down my distance that I found, trim, and that's it. I've just done the isometric for the flange bearing. Again, this is just the basic isometric. This is not the sectioned isometric. With the sectioned isometric, you're actually going to come through here and, and draw a line, cut this thing in half, and then view the interior of it so that you can see it here. So you see it's a little more complicated. It takes the isometric, but you're going to cut it in half and then kind of fill in the interior details. So for now, this is what you need. You're probably going to have to use the scale command to get it to fit on your page. So scale, select the object, specify the base point wherever you need the base point to be, and then you just type in a scale, like maybe a 0.75 would probably be a good size for it. Okay, that was it. Thank you.